Good morning, guys. I think I'm going to start doing a, in the near future, start doing a stream starting page when I first log in. Just for things like announcements or setting up for tryout days or that kind of thing. So, hey, Zenabu, hey, Care Bear, hey, Borga. Good morning, Nugati Knight. God, I love the mech, it, the mech symbols, dude. They're so fucking cool. I really, really, really like them. I love seeing this. Anyways. The hulking mechs for the long-term subscribers is just fucking clutch. I really like those. Tom, we, you did an excellent job with those, man. Those are so good. All right. So, checking out some new games this morning. A renewal. Welcome back. Hey, Norkster. Good morning. Oh, Slash. Oh, Slash. To you as well. How is it going? It's going well. So, uh, checking out some new games today. Uh, the Crowfall team continues to uh, dangle a little reward in front of our face and pull it away. Uh, I've been doing that for a while now. The most recent Crowfall update, the one that's been waiting, we've been waiting on for about a year, uh, dropped yesterday. It was up for two hours on their test server before they took it down again. Uh, I didn't get a chance to log in yet. But, supposedly that's up again today. I might check that out in the afternoon. I'm very excited about it. I'm not sure Crowfall is ready to be streamed quite yet. It's still very much in beta. Uh, but, I'm probably going to check it on a stream a little bit later. Can two, Tier 2 and Tier 3 subscribers get something unique? They do get something unique. Um, or rather, they get a different tier of mech. They get the 100 ton mechs, Care Bear. Um, was there something specific you had in mind? I wanted it to be thematic. Yeah, so you get some of the the biggest. You get the biggest mechs. Oh, how's everyone doing? Everyone surviving? Everyone, uh, keeping, uh, keep it to yourselves? Socially isolating? Our modest fellowship expands. Praise the sub. Hey, Deb Rookie Alex. Thanks for the sub, man. I'm glad you enjoyed the Battle Brothers, uh, guide stuff, and hopefully, uh, you'll check us out when we, uh, back to the battle brothers dlc that's coming out a little bit more information about that they announced gunpowder units i think everyone was kind of suspecting that with the grenades etc but uh let's check that out it's getting boring staying inside all the time yeah got a while to go too picked up about 20 books that's pretty smart laid off because you work in a restaurant yeah a lot of people having that fucking issue that sucks man Economies everywhere are getting tanked with this shit. So my wife has a uh, virtual happy hour tonight with one of her friends. And I thought, hey, that's a pretty fucking good idea. I should immediately steal that. So I was kind of thinking maybe we do that sometime this weekend, maybe Saturday. So maybe tomorrow. Maybe just chill, kind of do it like AMA style, just kind of. Maybe the end of the stream, chat, hang out, do some talking. You have returned. Thank you, Dehydrogen Naza. Filthy Seven. Welcome back for the 18 months. Filthy Seven to you as well. Getting the scam train started, I'll link it. Virtual happy hours just D&D. &D. I'm doing GURPS right now. I'm actually super excited about our GURPS campaign. Um, we're not quite to the point where we're ready to stream it yet, but it will. that is the plan eventually to be um, producing that for the channel. That's myself, Kevin, Jorbs, Dolphin Chemist, and Arvius playing together. I've been having a lot of fun with that. I really like the system. The system's super good. I really like the quirks and positive and negative attributes your characters can have. It was It's quite a lot of learning. I don't think it'll be a lot of learning to watch it because... It's mostly just outcomes still, but it's been super fun. Heard about Gordian Quest? Nope. Um, you're always welcome to suggest games in my Discord channel. Um, we have a whole system in place for doing that. Uh, here in chat, it's not a very good place for that. 
since mostly I don't pay any attention to it or rather I read it and then forget about it because I stream for eight hours and then at the end of my stream not really thinking about that. Yeah, I'm hoping to get the uh, the uh, role-playing stuff out again. I think we might stream it too is my eventual plan. Although I want to stream it, record it, upload it to YouTube both. If I stream it, it will be zero interaction streams because I think any sort of RPing with interacting with chat is literally impossible since I think uh, it pulls everybody out of the moment. But I kind of wanted to live stream it anyways. So we'll see. My wrist okay? Um, yeah, it's just been bothering me for a couple months. It's obviously repetitive um, motion stuff, but I don't really know what to do about it past the fact. Wear this when I can. This helps a lot. It's just a lot of pain. Turn. Blubby bro for the 15 months. No face touching. No face touching. Well, A, I don't think I'm going to change that anytime soon. And B, I'm isolated. I'm not too worried about it. But you're right. That is general good guidelines. Although, I'm not sure we've seen how good of a guideline it is, right? Anyways, I won't worry about that. How's Arby's play D&D with? Uh... RBS is the biggest issue with playing D&D uh, &D with RBS is RBS doesn't do very well with scheduled times. He seems to be about 15 minutes late to everything, no matter what it is. Um, but other than that, I think he's relatively new to uh, role-playing games, but he has expressed repeated interest in continuing to do it, really wants to be a part of it, and he's enjoying it. Uh, he just needs to put a little bit of uh, effort into figuring out the uh, figuring out what he wants to do with his character, etc. But actually really enjoying playing with RBS. He's a fun guy. Speak of the devil. Still got this issue. Quick update on that issue. OBS tells me it's my CPU. Uh, the manufacturers of my CPU, AMD, tell me there's no evidence that it's my CPU. I'm currently still working on it. Still checking that. Did I reinstall my computer? It's a funny way to phrase that. Enjoying that immensely. I love just randomly crashing a couple times throughout the day. We have some days where no crashes at all and some days where it's multiple crashes a day, just on OBS. Very excited about that. So as I was saying, part of what I'm concerned about is for example, if OBS crashes while I'm recording, I don't get a clean rec uh, recording. Although I guess if I stream it, I can just, um, I can export upload from that. It's probably a power supply. It's definitely not a power supply issue. Isn't there other software that allows me to stream? There is other software, but I'm not going to change software. It's because change software because I'm having a crashing issue. I'm going to fix the crashing issue. Might take me some time, but that's what's going to happen sooner or later. Imagine if that was life. Right? You're like, oh man, I tried to go to the store, but the store was closed. I can never use that store again, ever. That's my wife. She wanted to uh, go for a walk. She said, no, walks are done. I'm changing my pattern of exercise behavior to not include walks ever again. <laughs> it just be amazing. Uh, you said it's your CPU. Do I overclock it? I don't overclock it. Nope. Do I overcock it? I don't even know what overcocking is. I imagine that's like a, a more sexy version of overclocking, like overclocking tier two. Did I get a new PC? No, not a new PC. I mean, I got a new P I, I did build a new PC last fall and I had plenty of issues with the build itself, but um, no, this is a software issue somewhere. Although it might not be software. It might very well be hardware. Um, I, I believe it's the CPU and I have some CPU tests to support that. AMD is just being their, their, their support has been terrible. Their customer support is absolutely terrible. They keep having me redo things and bounce me between representatives and this type of shit. Super unfun. I'm not reinstalling Windows. Mm -hmm. We've done a lot of driver reinstall. Basically Comcast. No, not as bad as Comcast, but not great either. A lot of people assuming that everything I do is worthless and uh, 
I know nothing about anything besides the fact it's my fucking system and I built it and I've been, you know, updating it for years. And a lot of getting bounced between representatives, which means I'm redoing a lot of stuff. Anyways, so we're doing tryout day today. This means we're going to check out for about an hour, check out three different games. The goal is to identify games that look like they may be fun enough to play for a significant amount of time on stream. That's the goal of today. Uh, we're just making the decision today. I'm not really planning on putting much time into any of them. The kind of goal is, hey, these look decent enough when we read the reviews and looked at some little bit of gameplay footage or something like that. But we're not entirely sure until we actually get our hands on it and play it a little bit. And I used to do this offline, but I've been really enjoying doing this online, getting you all's feedback as we do it, and also showcasing some games that we might be playing. Um, if you're interested, you can always check out my big spreadsheet of games for this channel called exclamation point filthy games. And you can check out all of my ratings, all of my thoughts, um, how these games get in here are often discord suggestions. Then I have a look at them and I have a group of volunteers. Uh, the Ministry of Review for the channel, who are also taking a look at them and suggesting what they think, how the, the game will do for us on channel, basically. So that compilation of uh, scores decides if a game makes it to this type of review or not. So these are the ones that either myself or them or the combination of our stuff said, hey, this looks good enough that we should at least check it out a bit more. So. All right. Yes, uh, customer service isn't there for the customers. It's to protect the company from the customer. It feels a bit how they're doing here. They're like, you'd have to go through warranties to get this replaced, but we have no evidence that your CPU is having problems. I'm like, well, that's funny because every time I run this fucking CPU test, uh, two specific, one specific core comes back as having issues. And that core is very likely the causing crashes for OBS. But anyways, we'll see. Ministry of Review. Yeah, dude, the Ministry of Review. Um, it's not it's not to be confused with the Ministry of Denial, my mod team, but um, it is, nevertheless, another volunteer organization as part of this channel. All right, well, let's get started. Starting up first with Tainted Grail. I don't know a lot about it, but we're going to find out. Um, I think two of the three games that we're checking out this morning are early access and one is beta. So they're all... They're all don't look at the bugs kind of stuff, which is totally fine at this stage of the game. It's okay to have that. So we'll see what happens. I think this is basically that. This is an alpha. They'll be collecting data. Uh, balancing coming soon. Oh, is this based off a board game? I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, you will not spoil the board game. It's a totally different beast than the board game. Oh, okay. What is this? Overlapping text. Okay. Page file size I've already adjusted to make it huge. Um, and we've also I've also done uh, memory tests. All the memory tests come back clean, although I did have physical issues with the motherboard for memory when I first built this system and had to RMA the motherboard. So memory was my first culprit, but all the memory tests come back clean where not all the CPU tests come back clean. All right, let's check it out. Kulinagd is dying. Its barren fields provide little food, and its crumbling walls offer no protection. Is this As a game that's not too loud? Holy crap. Fails, the weirdness creeps ever closer. Twisting places, reaches. All right, this is probably too quiet for you guys. I'm gonna skip that intro sc screen and restart it and come back to that because I do want to see the intro together, but I, I, I think that's probably too quiet, right? Gotta turn that up a little bit, yeah. So um, I'll do that in just a second. I love that the entire range of sound is covered from this location here to that location there. That's too loud. That's too quiet. What does this other stuff on the left and right do? Like, if I want my ears to bleed, I go over here. And if I just want to experience silence, absolute silence, I go over here.
Judging just by the hum, and I do appreciate the hum when I'm adjusting master volume here, maybe? All right, let's assume it's there. All right. All right, we'll fire that up again. I want to watch the, the intro cutscene with you guys, so we'll do that now. Kuenact is dying. It's better. Its barren fields provide little food, and its crumbling walls offer no protection. As the power of the Guardian men here fails, the weirdness creeps ever closer. Twisting places. Yeah, and they have like keep coex weird symbols up everywhere. Space itself. Despite this, the people of the farmhold refuse to leave. Instead, Lord Yvain led four of their best on a desperate mission to Camelot. They promised to bring back help. They never returned. Now those left behind are growing desperate. They will try to bestow the burden of their fate on someone else. New heroes. With an even slimmer chance of success. Okay. So we've got an unknown creeping decay of some sort. Some fights can't be won straight away. Return them better preparation or more advanced gear. Sure, sure. All right, we may either be Bior, who looks a lot like Beer, or Ali, spotted with a lot of extra vowels. A local smith known for his short temper and incredible strength, he does his best to conceal a festering, unhealable wound in his side that he received under mysterious circumstances. Or an outcast whose entire family perished in the weirdness. She makes a modest living supplying er uh, healing herbs and roots to the locals. All right. Demos in an early build, and both characters have the same combat skills. Your choice will only influence the story and some exploration skills. Fine. I would like to be the man with the mysterious, unhealable wound. You've been sitting in this dark hall for the Did it get quiet again? Day. The bitterness of your ale, a good match for the bitterness of your thoughts. Excellent. Bitter is something I can do. They found you insufficient. They left you behind like a broken tool. Sure. Broken tool. The wound in your side suddenly throbs, and you punch it in response. Excuse me? Is that normally what people do? God, my arm hurts. Punch it. Interesting. Pain and rage overwhelming you for a moment. This is like... I had a friend in uh, high school who had computer issues. And he would literally hit the side of his computer with like a broken off table leg. And I saw that once and I'm just like, you what, mate? That's not going to help. <laughs> Alright. Only then you notice one of the farm holds guardians standing in front of you, his mouth agape. Do we threaten the guardian? Ignore him? No, we'll say, what now? Wait. Why are you so quiet all of a sudden? All right, I'll just do the reading. What now, I say? And he says, we, I'm sorry, but it's your turn to lay an offering. Do we lay eggs? It's a side effect of the wound. Every morning we lay an egg. Let's see what laying an offering is like. New quest, the God forsaken offering. It was not your turn today. Wait a minute. It literally says it's your turn. It was not your turn today. It's your turn. And even if it were, you know the truth. The men here's protection won't last. Oblivion stretches its cold hand towards this place, which I've already forgotten how to pronounce it. Kunak farm, uh, Farmhold after claiming many other parts of Avalon. Okay. Sure. New quest accepted. Let the weirdness come and take this damn place. It's a bit nihilistic. Be gone, I'm not in the mood to help anyone. Don't make me punch myself again. What offering? You must have read the ledger wrong. It's not my turn. 
What offering? An offering to our guardian Minnie. Have you been outside? We have missed his close now. Too quiet. An offering to our guardian Minnie. Have you been outside? The weirdest is close now, and the farmhold's ledger says you're next. Please, don't cause any trouble. Alright. Sure. Why do I keep insisting that it's not my turn? We as the player have no reason to believe it's not my turn. Oh, you can hear it? Oh, okay. It seems really quiet to me. But if you say you can hear it, I'll leave it be. Alright. Time passes. Your wound throbs again, as if someone was trying to rip free. As if something was trying to rip free and join the rolling clouds of weirdness outside. Sitting here any longer would be a torture. It's so weird to hear it, like... I always think of torture as, like... The, the noun itself being plural, right? Like, a torture seems like such a weird way to say it. Finish my drink or leave, but we're not leaving good beer behind. Our name is literally Beer. Welcome to Tainted Grails Pre-Alpha. Since it's an early version, please forgive us for interrupting your game in order to explain some things. Oh, that's good. These things on the bottom part of the screen are your quick slots. You can drag and drop items from your character's inventory. I, to this bar, and they'll be easier to select. Really useful with weird candles. Are we going to craft weird candles? You can use Alt on the keyboard to highlight all nearby loca locations. Useful when you're not sure when I visited every location or picked up every treasure on the way. So a lot of stuff happening here. There's four icons on the top. There's shortcuts to certain things. Your quest log, Q, your character sheet, C, your inventory, I, and resting functionality. Don't know what that is. And you have two skills you can use on the map. Then you have two skills you can use on the map in your character portrait and info. Double click on the portrait to get to your character panel. Mouse wheel, zoom, draw movement path, execute movement path, double left click, click right mouth, right, right mouse button on the ground to deselect hero, turn based, T is end turn, Q is quest log, S, selected hero status and effects, remind me about this one chat, I'll immediately forget, hero skills, floating tooltip, quick save, quick save causes problems, all right. Quick load. Space to hold up movement. All right. So presumably hold Alt. We got some stuff. Let's take a look at our inventory. We have an apron doing plus one armor and a hammer. Key to the forge, some mead and some food. Hot keyed in here. We're currently drunk. The town of Kunak, your homeland is dying. It's barren fields provide. Oh, we already read this. This is the intro. Okay. Oh, we have to give an offering to the men here. We have a skill tree. Quite linear, it looks like. Exploration tree. I don't know what these mean yet. That is a hideous wound. Generally, when parts of your skin turn black, you're in some trouble. All right. So this is the place we have to do sacrifices to. What happens if we just go to it? Let's find out. The local men here now towers above you, weathered and cracked, its ribbons flapping in the wind. See any ribbons. That this tired old thing is the only protection from pure weirdness outside of farmhold sends shivers up your spine. Alright, spine shivers. Afflicted by them now, I assume. Menhirs, 
raised by Merlin himself in the Age of Conquest, are said to have different appetites. Hey, sleeper. Okay. The one before you seems to best respond to fresh blood, and its thirst is not easy to quench. Makes you wonder what you're keeping out, right? But you're like, well, this one requires fresh blood. That's to protect us from the weirdness outside. That seems a bit weird. Look for a sacrifice. Spill my own blood requires 60 health. How much health do I have? 120. Let's look for a sacrifice. Let's assume that we don't want to spill our own blood here. Can be sated with animal blood just as easily as with human offering. Unfortunately, livestock is now scarce and very expensive. You need to hunt down some wild creature and drag it back to this place. I saw a giant dog. The thought of chasing prey on the edge of the weirdness makes you anxious. Your eyes slide past the prison, past the Kunox prison brooch. Perhaps there's another easier way to appease them in here. You think this is a like a building? I don't know. What I, I thought a brooch was a like amulet, or like um. Not even, like, for closing clothes or something. Anyways. That looks like... Look, this isn't even this isn't even someone's pet. This is a crazed dog. That's a brooch with an A. What's a B-R-O-C-H brooch, then? Leave the dog alone. It's murder. No, it's a sacrifice. Iron Age drystone hollow-walled structure. Oh, cool. And brioches of bread. See? Chat being helpful. I appreciate that. So there might be a prisoner over here, which wouldn't be murder. That would be illegal. Experimenting on prisoners is definitely illegal. All right, let's go to the well. I don't know why. Well, why not? You got... The water in the well is unnaturally fresh and invigorating. It is drawn from far depths where the weirdness shouldn't affect it. I got 10... Feet. What is that? Is it an inventory item? Ten movement. Press S on the dog. No, that's us. I don't think the dog the dog is drunk yet. <laughs> that's why to eat. <laughs> this is another crazed dog. How are we having trouble with sacrifices? We got a dozen crazed dogs in the village. Uh oh. Crazed dog. He has 1% of that, 2% of that, and 0% of that. He is 0% ram. Good to know. Except here, he's a yellow ram. We'll I'm have to figure the combat system out. 33 health, presumably. I think it's a card based combat system, I think. Okay, each skill has a cost, has an electricity cost. Apart from that, each skill has two effects. Immediate, such as direct damage, and momentum, influencing the next skill you play. Okay. Four to six damage. Lowers your non-red runes to zero. And the next card is red, costs one less. Each charge feeds the rune, providing a passive boost. Upon reaching a maximum value, the rune can be used to deliver its ultimate. It's up to you to consume the rune for the ultimate or to maintain its accumulated points. Most skill change runes. Okay, so this is how much it charges that. Interesting. I want to know what these are. Health, sanity, resolve. Sure. Our health's only at 109. How did we lose health? We were at 120 when we were at the well like two seconds ago. We've been debuffed. One of these is drunk. I don't know what the other one is. Probably a weird wound or something. This is your enemy's intent. Enemy will cast an effect on you, is the ram. Enemy will deal damage, is cross swords. To your health, resolve, or sanity. Sanity, excuse me. An enemy will heal yourself. The color under the attack type icon indicates his target. For example, Purple ram means damage to your sanity. No, purple ram says right here means it will cast an effect on you. Cross swords would be damage, because that's what cross swords mean. Now you've confused me. Why the fuck 
his purple dot ram damage. No, chat. You can't tell me it's different colored and it's because of the color. There's a whole different symbol. The color told me the target, sure, and we have three targets, but the, the effect, the, the symbol was supposed to tell me what it did. Enemy's going to heal itself, uses a health symbol. Enemy's going to attack me, uses an attack symbol. Enemy's going to cast an effect on me, uses an, an effective cast on me. All right. Chance to avoid all damage from any attack. Is also the ram head. No, that's... Okay. So that's the... This is evasion, then. Chance to deal a critical hit is this one. And chance to resist any negative effect because the ram head is effect-based. Right? That's what effects are. Okay. There are positive negative effects placed on you by enemies on your actions. There are four types of negative ones, and all positive ones are affected by gold. Oh, God. Golden and orange look very fucking similar. Okay. Sure. Sure. Here to exit tutorial. I was hoping to have a tutorial fight, friend. All right. So is this our stuff? Probably. I don't think the dog has whirlwind. Fucking dog. We have a shield? No, we don't. I checked our inventory. We have a fucking hammer. All right, so let's take a look. We have whirlwind. All right. We gain energy and draw cards. We get armor per charge or brawler. Cost of all red cards is zero this turn and their damage is increased by 100%. Passive for every charge gain 10% damage. So this is our hand, I guess, and this is our energy. This cost me one energy, this cost me two, that cost me one, okay. What does shield slam with my imaginary shield do? Next card has a chance to, for critical hit equal to your armor. What's my armor right now? One. Oh, armor is percent based damage reduction. That doesn't seem very good. How much damage does he do? He's a 2% chance to crit. I don't know how much damage he does. So enemy attends to deal damage to my health. That makes total sense. It's a dog. So that means if I had 50 armor, I'm only taking half damage. And I can pump armor up in increments of 3 up to a total of 30. Alright, so we want to just kill it rather than try to tank shit, I think. I only have one red card, though. And I'm not sure if I can get more cards in my hand. So presumably, four to six damage gain 100% resist. 100% resistance to what? Where's my resistance stat? I've only seen dodge and health so far. Remove all negative status effects. All right, we're, we're going to cast blue cards because we have blue cards in hand. I'm going to start with this. The next card is blue. It costs one less. The next, if the skill has an effect, it lasts one turn longer. Okay, and what does this one do? Next turn, enemy that attacks any. Next turn, any enemy that attacks you gets bleeding. I would like that, but I want to get rid of my evasion debuff. All right. I get three cards though, right? Okay. So no longer debuffed, and that changed our evasion from zero to zero. So that's that's good. We were losing fifty percent of our evasion, but our, apparently our base evasion is zero anyways. Okay. Yeah, so armor went up. Armor went up every single time we'd cast that. All right. Uh, let's do momentum into... So we have two more. Oh, this costs zero now. So I can cast all of these. Yeah, I'll gain resistance. Careful approach. So we did a little bit of damage. Applied a 100% chance to resist a negative effect. Okay. So it's resist an effect, not um, resist like an enemy. All right. We're still building. I don't know why that one didn't build armor. It says per charge plus three armor. All right. Cast shield of thorns. And then we'll cast shield slam. We crit him with our shield slam. All right, no more cards in hand. I don't know how many we draw per turn, for example, so we'll see that in a minute. All right, he hit us. All 
with something. I need like a uh, spent cards. He did something to us. It was an attack of some sort. It did damage. It didn't seem to bleed us. I don't know if he, we resisted the bleed because he, there was was a bleed or again we had the 100% resist or because there's no bleed. Either way. Minor bleeding. The dog is bleeding. Dog is at 29 health. Oh, I see. So this card, for example, doesn't build runes because it has no thing on the left. Thanks. All right. So we could switch tact. Shake the mountain. 28 to 45 damage. And he has a five point bleed. So presumably if we just hit him with this, he's dead. Or, can draw some cards. Well, feels like killing him is probably better than drawing cards right now. All right. So, I need to look at the damage on that. But him, him surviving at three health, hopefully the bleed kills him. I don't know when the bleed ticks, if it's my turn or his turn. So we're going to find that fucking out. His turn. All right, rip dog. No, I don't want to take the dog's food. I want to use the dog to sacrifice to the statue. All right, we've claimed two dog food. Excellent. Sure. Let's go where the, the quest told us to go. There's a lone guard posted by the only door of the... Do I still call it a brooch? Broke? It's probably a broke. He should be guarding his lone prisoner, but instead he's immersed in a drunken dream. Oh, poor guard. He's lonely. Try to talk to him. Leave him be. Well, I want to go past him. Is immersed in a drunken dream unconscious? Most people dreaming are not awake. But why would I try to talk to him? Rhymes with lock. It's Brock. Okay. The Brock, this monster. <laughs> nice. Okay. Is this King's Bounty? I'm going to give you a hint. There's always a way to tell what game a streamer is streaming. There's actually a command hardwired into Twitch for that. You can always check that, or you could read the title, or you could read the tweet, or you could read the Discord. Any of those things will get you the answer you seek. All right. Try to talk to him or leave him be. I'm, I'm going to leave him be because I want to go past. Oh, but apparently that ends my dialogue option with the place. Sure. Let's try again. I guess we'll talk to him. The guard growls. But I killed the dog. Shouldn't you be at the menu or spilling your stupid blood? Go away unless you have something for my headache. No, so get lost. All right. I'm supposed to bring a prisoner. Shut up and drink this. It should help with the pain. Don't trouble yourself with this drunkard and leave. Let's give him one mead. You lost one mead. Well, that guard looks surprised at first, but accepts the situation immediately. He takes a long swig. What do you want? I want to speak with the prisoner. Guard shrugs and points at the entrance to the rock. To literally go back and rhymes. I like that, by the way. That is a... Um, you guys ever watch Ben Stark streams for the, you know, the magic player, the limited player? I like that's how his chat teaches him to pronounce things is they tell him what it rhymes with. And I think that is the best fucking way to learn how to pronounce something online. Helps me too. So Brock line, rhyming with lock is very good. As you step in, you see a ragged man chained to a wall in an uncomfortable position. He was caught stealing food several nights ago. He claims to be a scholar from Camelot with a K, but looks and smells just like any other vagabond. You say lock wrong? No, I don't. Farmhold's elders kept him alive so far to verify his side of the story, but with all roads cut off by the weirdness, no one is going to Camelot anytime soon. Finally, someone has come to release me. I've come all the way from Camelot to check on your dirty little village. Free me and you'll be rewarded later. No, we need blood. You're full of it. The man looks like regular scum, but maybe you should give him a chance. When you were young, your father took you to Camelot and you... Remember the sight of this magnificent castle clearly. Okay. 
How many towers are there on the outside wall? What do I care? Four of them, I think. There were five. He either can't count or he's lying. You don't need to make this morally acceptable for me. I was willing to sacrifice him without any justification of him being a liar or not clean or anything. We're already there. You going with me? I have an offering to make. You're just like the other animals that live here. Yes. I got... <laughs> he's in my inventory now. We stuff him in a bag. Takes a minute to get him in there, but we get him in there. All right. Let's check out the tower. Long ago, the hunters of Kunak used this high seat win. to scout the nearby forest for prey. Sometimes they camped here on their way north to the lodges and the bountiful hunting grounds. Now it stands deserted except for one elderly man standing guard. Hello, elderly man. Would you like some mead? Who are you and what are you doing? I'm searching for people who wish to be full of bl who wish to have less blood inside them. The man is visibly surprised. Me? Oh, I asked him what is he doing here? He's on guard. Shouldn't he be asking me that? I'm just one of the hunters who worked at the lodge. The fortunate one I managed to escape in time. Uh, Drage Lanyon. Thanks for three months. Welcome back. What do you mean? Look at me, I'm old. I didn't leave for the hunt with the rest. And then the weirdness flooded the lodge. I was able to find my way here. Can I buy food from you? Why would I assume he has food for... Okay. Tell me more about hunting out there. Climb the tower. Has a different symbol. So the rest of the hunters are still out there somewhere. Let's let's figure this out. The rest of the hunters still out there? I sure hope so. They were hunting near the hunter's grove. Makes sense. If they had the chance to see the weirdest creeping in, they would have they would have run to the grove or straight to our lodge. It's on the way to the grove a bit to the east. Okay. I got an experience. Tell me about hunting out there. The old hunter shrugs his arms. Also, there's no H in shrugs, right? How do you shrug an arm? It's risky. Sometimes the meat is just fine, but sometimes. You have returned. Thanks, Sully. Welcome Return back. Car and expiration. 46 months of subbing. Long time, man. Uh -uh, sometimes the meat is just fine, but sometimes just a pile of meat drying on a beam above his head. You get this. You look at the meat confused at first because it just looks fine, but soon you realize what the old man meant. The haunch shines with a slight tint of blue from time to time, as if it were twisting the light itself. What is it? We don't know. We tend to throw it out whenever we find it, because no one in their right mind would try to eat it, right? But now that the meat is so scarce, I'm thinking maybe I'll be able to get rid of the blue shade somehow. Can I take some with me? I have no idea why you want that, but knock yourself out. Great. Now we have tainted meat. All right, let's climb the tower because that's another dialogue option. Take a deep breath, welcoming fresh breeze. You take a deep breath, welcoming fresh breeze touching your face. The view is clear and allows you to state your position along some of the surroundings. Leave. All right, let's go um, sack this guy. Maybe we'll fight another dog. Maybe we'll have to fight the prisoner to sacrifice him. All right, giant statue, have a prisoner. Burn animal remains. Requires dog carcass. How do we not have a dog carcass? Sacrifice the prisoner. Requires prisoner. Sacrifice the meat. Requires meat. Sacrifice my own blood. Do we get a dog carcass? I didn't remember. You lost dog carcass. You spilled the blood at the foot of the statue. The statue, the cracked stone drinks greedily. You feel the You lost dog carcass. You feel the menu's power surging up. You got ten experience. Once again, the weirdness is pushed back. Once again, the land returned to Puanact is smaller than before, barely reaching past the furthest buildings of the farmhold. Oh, poor statue. He doesn't have enough fuel. Let's give him some more fuel. Bystanders disperse, and you sit down to catch your breath. Most of the people are now heading to the mead hall to raise a toast for yet another day. Kunak bought itself with blood. But as you contemplate joining them, you notice a smaller group of villagers moving towards the abandoned houses at the edge of the farmhold, now safe from the weirdness. You catch some words about the wealth they're hoping to find in homes that belong to champions of Yvain's expedition. Might be a good idea to see what's happening over there. 
Especially since the knight who rules Kunak doesn't seem to be around to stop the looting. Okay. You earned a new level. C to level up. It's a neat surprise waiting for the character sheet when you hit 5. Alright. This is a level up. So we've completed Scapegoat. I guess these are the options we didn't take. Okay. One point. Empty upgrade slot. Filling the slot costs one skill point. Okay, do we want to upgrade attack or defend? I have no understanding of why I would upgrade either. Let's upgrade something different. Exploration, no exploration spots. Skills. These are the skills I had available, probably my deck. All right, let's upgrade it. Ooh, more options. Unending stamina, increase max red charges to 12. Ultimate still cost is still 12, or still 10. Each red charge plus 2% critical chance per attack. Each red charge 2% cripple chance per attack. What does the blue one do? On each hit received in combat plus one armor. On each blue charge plus 3% resistance. Um, those not work in alpha. Okay. Let's take red. Would I have to choose which one? Alright, I don't know enough to assign that. We're just going to keep fighting until I have some more information about why I would want one of those. Marketplace. We had a side quest for this. Let's go over here and side quest. Oh, also, can I sacrifice again? No. This, this statue doesn't want more blood. I have more blood to give it, though. It's actually a deck builder, yeah. People gathered in front of Yifre's house argue loudly. Some of them are trying to stop the others from breaking the door down. It seems like the crowd wants to loot the house before the weirdness once again cuts it off from the rest of town. As much as you hate the idea of robbing your friend and mentor, you can't deny that he's most likely dead. And even if he isn't, with the weirdness clouding roads and trails, you'll be hard-pressed to ever return. Um, stop the madness. The man you're trying to rob was just a smith. I think I'd defend our friend's house for a little bit. I'm not quite ready to give up on a friend. One of the people shouts, the smith is gone. We can't let any of his belongings go to waste. Step back or you'll be sorry. Step back, scum. You have no right to claim the property of someone who fights to save the town. All right. We're fighting three of them. We have a handful of red cards. This costs me... F oh, it gives me four progress on Brawler. Damage to all enemies. Gain progress for each hit. Wait, this cost me negative one energy, so it gives me an energy back? Oh no no no. No no no. Cost me it cost me an energy. Alright, so we have three energy. This one reduces the next card by one. So we could cast all three of these. A total of four, but reduced by one. Seems like what we probably want to do. Wait, but I want to use it. Fuck, how do I, I thought I was casting these by clicking on them last time. Do I not? Do I have to choose a target, maybe? Alright chat, I've forgotten. How do I fucking ca cast this? Tap on the side. Where's the battle log? Make it glow then target. Alright. I'll target the one who's attacking. These two are healing, so it seems pointless to attack them. Okay. Should stun that guy. 
Okay, he's stunned. So he doesn't get to do anything to us. Oh, unable to move. Do you think that also means unable to attack? And then we're gonna we're charging up our thing over here, and then we'll use our last two points for this. Ten to seventeen damage to all enemies. Okay. So we're eight of ten on this. They healed and now this guy's attacking and these two are attending to debuff. So if we hit this for every charge gain 10%, cost of all red cards is zero this turn and their damage increased by 100%. So that gives us progress, that doesn't, that gives us one progress. Next card is not red, draw one card. All right, so we probably start with the Swift Strike. Which is the guy attacking us with damage, maybe? This guy's at two health less, but two health less is not that exciting. Remember the momentum effect. Shit, I just targeted wrong. I was trying to fucking untarget. What was the momentum charge of that? I don't think it had momentum. Yeah, I could have gone with crit first, but I was trying to activate free costs, so I could... My plan was to... And is still, because now this is free. All my red cards cost is zero. So my assumption was by getting that to 10, I could cast all my red cards, and then I could use the blue card, the red, the finish with the red card that lets me draw a card by playing a blue card and play more. So I think momentum was fine in this way. I had momentum from last turn. Oh, I didn't know that I had momentum from last turn, but maybe that would have changed things. All right, anyways. You want to do this one next? It should cost me zero. It still says it's costing one. That, in fact, cost me one. Oh, I have to use it, maybe. Fuck, I have to use it. Rip. So we crit his ass, sure. And now we use a blue card. We're going to draw a card, which we can't. Well, we might. if we draw a red card, presumably we can use it. All right, 10... 10 to 20 damage, gain 100% resistance for one turn. They're trying to re debuff me, so that seems good. Draw a card. The card should be free, because we use that. And we're like, easy fight, peasants. How come that one hit me? They were both intending debuffs. Why did the second one hit me? Who knows? I, I don't remember where we got the key from, Othello. Probably, I mean, it's quite possible. It was an attack. You killed one of the two debuffing. Oh, right, because I targeted the wrong fucking one because I misclicked. That's right. Okay. So it's, I don't see any momentum effects here. Okay. So this guy's planning to debuff me, and that guy's planning to attack me. Can heal with that. Small amount of damage because there's no debuffs on them. Alright, let's heal, I guess. It's cost me two to do that, though. Fuck, that's a lot. Alright, let's take prep. Should have drawn a card. I think we did. All right, if the next card is blue, we heal, but we're out of stuff. Should've done it the other way around then. The next card is blue, draw a card. Well, I was trying to get effect out of that, but it doesn't seem very useful here. The next card is blue, it costs one less energy. All right, so we play that only to build up the charge, I guess. I could bleed them if he attacks me, but I don't really want to do that. 
That would be a good... This one cost me zero, but I'm going to have one afterwards. I could play that. Do I want to gain 20 armor? So how much damage are they doing? I don't have a sense of its attack value. So it's hard to see if a 13 point heal or 20% damage reduction is better. This gives me quite a bit more charge, but this is only, this is a two cost one. Well, these are one cost ones. What's the alt here do? Draw cards. All right, let's heal. Oh, thought I had two left, so I didn't even get my heal. I guess it's next turn I can get a heal though, because the momentum's still there. All right, hit me for eight and applied bleeding, and then we bled for five. All right, draw a card. If the next card's blue, draw a card. I could trigger this with this one. Gain three energy, draw two cards. All right. Next card's blue, draw again. So that card would have been good if I had armor, but I don't. But we've reset our blues, so we don't have to do that. So next card is blue, heal, but we're at full, I think. We're just bleeding. And we have four energy. This thing's attacking me, that thing's debuffing. Probably another bleed. This thing's at 30 health. Cost me two energy. 21 health, we can just kill it, right? Okay. So it bleeds me again. It reset it. Did it give me, no, it didn't. I think it was doing five. It actually, not only did it reset it, it upped its effect. I have a clear debuff somewhere. I can probably kill him. Anyone know if bleeds persist past combat? All right. Switch to aggressive stance. Lowers my non red non non runes to zero, sure. It's cost if it's red it costs one less. Do any of these draw me? Because I could save Brawler for another turn right now. Use enemy's armor by seven. Next card, 15% crit chance, sure. Still using energy right now, that's fine. Or it could make it free to finish with this and then play this card. I guess I don't have to play. He's trying to bleed me, I could resist that. All right. So I'm currently doing 100% extra damage because of this. I think it already modified this for us or no? 16 to 27, let's see what it does for damage. 37, I think it just said. But I don't know if it crits 50%, that just doesn't tell me shit. I can kill him with this. Okay. All right, we told them not to break into our friend's area. They didn't believe us, then we killed them. A couple of your opponents lie dead in the mud. The rest curses you from a safe distance. Many people of Kunat think you cheated on your daily offering. 
and this bloodshed enraged them further. The stones they begin to throw at you hurt, but the fact your own kin turned against you causes even more pain. People look at you, then at each other. Finally, one of them speaks. He's right. Ifer might still come back. After all, he wouldn't leave this... He wouldn't leave this forge to his loser of an apprentice. Oh, that's us. The burst of laughter helps relieve some tension. The crowd starts to disperse. After we killed somebody? You keep looking towards the door. Hand in your pocket, resting on the old lead key he had given us. That has an A in it, right? You decide it makes sense to move some of his more valuable tools before the weirdness returns. Into my inventory. Open the door. You open the door to glance, probably for the last time, at the familiar interior. Everything looks as it always does, but as you prepare to gather tools scattered around a large workbench, you notice a piece of parchment on the floor under it. Did the, dra the draft carry it from the table, or was it discarded? You get one letter. In this short note, your master explains the reason why Yvain did not take you on his quest. Young Lord of Kunat believed you were too reckless, and he saw your wound as a liability. But Ifer never doubted you. He believes that should... Yvain's expedition fail, you are the second best chance Kunat has. As you finish the letter, you're overwhelmed by sadness, but also pride. You put it in your pocket and quickly finish your work. I got a broken hilt and a rusted chest plate. Okay. I'm still carrying the prisoner dude in my backpack? Yeah, but we feed him every once in a while. He's fine. New skills, presumably from level 2. Ah, uh, feel the spine pop a little bit. Feels good. Yeah, we got blue meat and the small prisoner. Go to the meat hall, they said. Choose a new skill. Stun an enemy. Discard all cards. Draw five new cards. Ooh, I like it. Cost me two energy, though. Critical. Did I use critical fly bleeding? If next card is blue, five armor for remainder of the battle. Two to three damage. Momentum. Next card deals double damage. We'll take a reposition. Except. Is that in addition to my character level up? It is. Alright. Meat Hall? Town management is not in the available demo. Sure, okay. Bleed is persisting. Thanks. The moment you enter the mead hall, I turn towards you. Some of the people you met by your mentor's house are here. In front of them stands the maimed knight himself. You were able to talk some sense to the people. To hold things together when tempers ran high. Good. No, I killed them. That's not talking sense to them. You shrug your arms. You don't like where this is going. You do not trust this you man. Would just be the person I was hoping to find. Someone who could handle an urgent task. Guards, escort everyone else outside. Your hand grasps the letter in your pocket. Your mentor also asks you to step up. What if they were wrong? You're now alone with the knight, trying not to look at the bandages covering half of his face or to think about the unsettling stories you've heard about him. I kept watching the other day. I needed to see how well you and obstacles before I tell you the truth. I am your father. Truth that our men here is falling. Nod your head and listen. When Lord Yvain left me in charge of this farm home, I thought the task was beneath me. Turned out it's quite the opposite. I cannot travel outside anymore. Will you help me? Coronavirus in that town too. What do you want me to do? have to find a way to strengthen the Minia and buy more time so that Yvain may finish his quest. Blood is not sufficient anymore. We need another source of power to... Blue meat. Uh, where should I look? Any ideas? In days of old, before the purges, it was druids who took care of Minias. The one Yvain cast out from the city may still be alive. You may also ask someone who knows a thing or two about objects infused with magic. Your people speak about a witch in the woods to the west. Maybe she knows what could help our stone. Maybe she's a sexy witch. I think that's the time. 
We're going for the witch. In days of old, before the purges, it was druids who took care of many years. The one Yvain cast out from the city may still be alive. Okay, this is what they just read to us out loud. Okay. All right. It's impossible to travel, out, travel outside. The knight reaches for the satchel at his side and hands you a couple of candles made from a strange dark wax. Earwax. You shudder. You never thought you'd get to use one of these foul things. Weird candles. Make every one of them count. Some maybe more. Some more may still be bought around the area. They get scarcer by the day. Do not make think make the mistake of thinking that their light turns you invulnerable. If you keep peering too long into the weirdness, it is bound to look back. His hand touches the bandage on the side of his face. If you won't go out there, no one will. In weeks, the town will be swallowed whole. Don't wait until the weirdness is at your very doorstep. Ah, cool. All right. Um, I would like to see maybe one or two fights. So it looks like what this is is a story-based card game. Uh, a little bit more of a darker background than the other ones we've tried on stream. Um, the card of combat is fine so far, but it's still card combat, which is only whatever. I don't love card combat in general. Anywhere else we want to go in town before we leave? The Red Priest Camp sound interesting. Let's go there. What do you got for me, Red Priest? The Red Clothed Tent belongs to the Red Priests. Not many are brave enough to actually speak to the members of this reclusive order that dates all the way back to the homelands. The fact that they, the law of the land lets Red Priests seize anyone on suspicion of sickness probably something to do with the reluctance. Don't be afraid, child. We're here to help. Inside the tent, some men and women sit in a thick cloud of choking incense and just chase away any plague-spreading miasmas. Who are you? I don't want to know who they are. How are you helping? Trying to stop the plague and find a cure. It's not much of an explanation. We know there's nothing new he could tell you about an illness that pushed humans out of their homelands beyond the sea, chased them all the way to Avalon, and now eats away at their remnants. For some, it's only, the incur it's only an incurable disease that turns your entire skin into an open wound. Others come to see it as a... It's not a very mysterious wound for us. If we know what the cause is, it's a disease. All right, turns your entire skin into an open wound. Others come to see it as a force of history, a hand that will erase humanity from the face of the world. Yes, but how? How do you do that exactly? You see a mixture of emotion on the man's face. He's angered by your impudence, but at the same time happy because of your curiosity. It's not something I can easily explain, not without breaking the vows of my order. The exact work is kept secret by my superiors, but if you're really interested in learning our ways, we're always looking for some hired help on the island asylum. Yeet. All right. Oh, okay. So it's another location. Looks like we're unlocking... Um, locations to go to, sure. Some quests. The island just off the coast, southwest from here. They say it was the first place where humans made landfall in Avalon. We found an ancient acropolis there, carved into three sides of a mountain overlooking a dark grove. We repurposed its halls and corridors as a hospital. The only way in and out of the island is by a ferry. His spoiled teeth flash in a smile. If you bear the signs of the plague, there's no fee for crossing to the other side. <laughs> yeah, I bet there is it. You get a free pit on the other side, too. And a little bit of lime. Um, lie rather, excuse me. Uh, what about the weirdness? Most people don't care if the their neighbor turned into a misshapen monstrosity because of the plague or because of the weird. It's, it's us who they call regardless. We had to open a new wing of the asylum just for the weird claim. Red death is an older and greater threat, but our work on curing it recently took a back seat. With the men here is weakening. We now see more victims of the weird than of the plague. Okay. All right. All right. I'm done talking to you. You're boring. Okay. Uh, where are we headed? Let's get to the town exit, the ruined gate. Any other exits? Observatory. Wait, what was this? Stash of oddities, hidden wealth. Wait, really? Yeah. A highwayman. All right, crazed dogs times two. Why are we crippled? Alright. Uh, all enemies. Alright. Game momentum. Next card. We can play this for free, basically.
debuffing my resolve, okay? Next card costs one less. Is there any way I could trigger that? The next card generates one more, so I could do all of these attacks this turn if we want to. By using this card. Sure. Or we could just have this buff for next round. Feels like killing it before it does any damage is worth something, right? Twelve to twenty. Reduce. Okay, if then if I reduce its armor, we just one shot it. Shit, I should have gone the other way then. Good God. Fights me for seven. Do we have healing? The next card is not red. Draw one card. All right. Could outright kill it. I was looking for some way to heal. Don't see it. Sure. Wait, what? Oh, it costs three. All right. Is there a difficulty, you think? Nope. Okay. Resource pile. Oh, we're in the weird now. Do I have to use candles? It tossed me a turn to do that, to go to the resource pile, but I'm not actually interacting with it. This irritates me. Bandage myself to get rid of the wound. Hmm. How do I interact with this then? All right, Highwayman with seven armor, 10% crit chance, 6% evasion, and 6% resist. Okay, let's get some armor. Me for eleven. Four progress there, not super exciting. Do I have any stuns? Next card is not red. Draw a card. Okay. Where's my, oh, I drew a card. Okay. He's attacking me again. Debuff doesn't actually help me, or resistance doesn't help me at all. Okay. Seemed like a shit turn. Feels like something we'd like to use. The next skill has an effect that lasts one turn longer. So we can bleed him for four turns. The idea of him fighting us for four more turns seems really bad. And then we could run this. This is four more. What happens when we do that? We get energy back. So it's not a whole lot of point for that. We could just trigger the blue one. So let's just draw charges. Okay. 
So prep gives us two. That gives us four. And that gives us one. Our modest fellowship Evaded. Praise the sub. Zafi Prod, thanks for the sub. All right, let's do this. We get 56% extra damage because we have 28 armor right now, and this should trigger our thing and heal us. Okay. Now we could do this thing. The next card has a chance for critical hit equal to my armor, which is 31. Feels like we probably want that crit next turn. Maybe we just hold this for now. Although we could get the crit this turn. I just don't think we're going to kill him. Does it matter? I don't want to give up my armor either. All right, let's end turn. Take 10, which is quite a lot. Next card is red, it costs one less. Four to seven damage, not super exciting. <laughs> Lower your non-red runes to zero, get fucked. Sun enemy for one turn, that seems nice. Next card ignores enemy armor. No damage on it though. Eight to 14 damage, reduce an enemy's armor by seven. Could also just gain draw cards right now. But we have crit equal to our armor. We could shield slam again while we're at full armor. It's a lot of damage. We could jab into a shield slam. Or shield slam into a jab. He's planning on dotting us. your next card is blown. Oh, I didn't realize we have next card, but let's do this. Wait. Draw two cards. Or we'd use two. Okay. Gain 20 armor out of this. Good momentum here. We'll set this to zero. Sure. We get to nine. We have two left, but neither of them add. Oh shit. Oh no, no, that's fine. Okay. He resisted. Alright, so we just popped off on him and killed him. Great. We got a human bone. Ah, nice. You can crack it to suck out the marrow. It's helpful. Three more candles. How do I know if I'm still in the effect of my weird candle? Camp, inventory, quests, dominating presence. The two on my head, thanks. So I've been unable to interact with these things yet, and I want to. How do I interact with them? That highlight, hold on, no, don't, no, oh, don't walk over, oh. I want to pop the four. I feel like I should be looting more of this. What is this shambles? Hunter's camp there. I want to engage this creature. Wow. It is a warg with five armor and it implies double debuffs. Our wound is apparently gone. Gain resistance for one turn. Hmm? Hmm. 
We can heal. It's cost me two. We could go two into that, or we could go. All right, so this gives us four. Let me do this thing. And then we do this thing. And then we call it a turn. So put our resistances up. I don't know if we're going to evade both debuffs or not. Yeah, we evade both debuffs there. So we did nothing to us this round. And we built up five charges of this thing. Okay. Gain 10 armor for this turn. The skill has an effect. It's the last one turn longer. So that seems good. So we should have two rounds of extra armor. Oh, thanks, Merc. Your next card is a chance for critical hit equal to your armor. We've got two fuel left. Stun enemy for one turn. You just resist it? No, it's stunned it. Okay. And we'll shield slam it, build that up. Looks good. Did nothing on his turn because it was stunned. All right, I've got eight of 10 blue, but no blue fucking cards. That sucks. Could bleed it. Debuff its armor. Bleed is expensive, right? Bleed is two. So if we bleed it and then hit it with this, how much damage? Six to 10 plus 16 to 28. It's not very much actually. Critical chance of, of uh, armor right now. Does he have a negative status effect? We did debuff his armor, but I don't actually see a negative status effect on him. I think it was S. And then it doesn't show me shit. There's the status effect. This is for 13. Shouldn't our armor have gone down this turn? Since we generated armor for two turns, but not three turns. Hmm. Okay. Doesn't look like the 10 armor lasted for two turns. So that's kind of bullshit, because that's what it says it does, but sure. Uh, next card is red, generate three. We're all red cards again. I should probably kill it. All right, one momentum. Didn't I use a bunch of red cards last turn? Why are we only at one? I guess they didn't have uh I'm trying to figure out a way to avoid taking damage, but I have no stuns, no way to draw cards, and no ways to trigger this, so I don't think we can get there this turn. Cost me two. I guess we keep debuffing it. All right, apparently we had the damage. All right, an exciting development. All right, uh, I wanna do one thing. Let's go to the hunter's camp. We have one more turn of this apparently. What happens when it goes out? Does it tell me? Okay. Stern faces of local hunters tell many stories. They're willing to sell you some of their hunted game. Wait, I thought I was rescuing them. I don't need your fucking bread. I got my own bread. Well, good talk. Okay. 
A bandit's encampment. All right, maybe we call this uh, the last fight of this game and then we move on. Okay, we just shut that off. All right, bandit's encampment, three enemies, 15 armor each, 125 health. All right, let's do it. Dead? Maybe. All right, damage, momentum, bleeding. I feel like I should heal every time I see it, but 13 health probably isn't good enough with two of them here. We probably have to get somebody off the board as soon as possible. The highwaymen and two brigands. us for 16 poisons us and hits us for 17 this is like a bad round of stuff for us of course we have no red cards except this card I don't think we survive another round though. Can we use stuff like this? Restores 15 sanity and 10, whatever the hell that thing is. That gave us health back. Doesn't seem to cost actions or stuff. Okay. So we're not dead yet. Yeah, we could deploy the prisoner, maybe. So I definitely want to do this. That's not good for us right now. Resistances seem pretty good. They're all tending to debuff us, so... Remove all negative statuses. Seems good. Resist the debuffs. And then whirlwind them. Good, good. Yeah, we're stuffing our face full of loaves of bread. It's fine. Cost of all red cards is zero this turn. The damage increased by 100%, but right now we already have 100% damage because we have 10 charges of Brawler, right? So this will do additional damage. Enemy has a status effect, which they do. They're attempting to debuff and hit us. The next card is red, generate one. Presumably, I mean, I could make these free. Nuke with both. The issue is that would give us two back. I'd rather softening blow here. Next card is not red, draw one card, you bet. We're at two of three energy. 
definitely want this going up. Seventeen to twenty-eight. I wonder if it's just you know it's seven percent. It's not just subtraction. That's annoying, dude. Seven percent is not a fucking easy number to do mentally either. What's seven percent of seventeen? Find out. It's one point nine. One point one nine. Excuse me. So we're always doing at least fifteen damage to him. Then it's not less than one, <laughs> apparently. Anyways. We're gonna kill this guy. Should kill him. Oh, the next card is not red draw card. So we can kill him with this too. Okay. Could draw a card here. And then to toggle brawler and hit him like three times. Next card's not blue, draw a card. Great. Let's do this. Toggle Brawler. Debuff his armor. Draw a card. Where's the card I was supposed to draw? If we're not, if our next card is not blue, draw a card, it said, right? The next card is not red. Draw one card. Double attacks there. Draw one card. Can we go up to six cards? We've never seen. Let's see if we can go to six cards here. We can go to six cards. Stunning blow is nice. Or stunning that guy. Or stunning this guy, maybe? I don't know if we can kill him or not. We need 10 armor. So we can stun them both. Jesus. Problem is, I've got two points left. This one costs two. We need to generate energy. This one only costs one. Any of these generate more. This will give me two prep for that. This thing's gonna poison me. I'm gonna stun that. Although I guess he could resist. Next turn, any enemy that attacks you gets bleeding. No. I don't think discarding my entire hand is any good. This card looks amazing, by the way, but not like midway through the turn sequence. I'm, I guess I was hoping to draw a card, but maybe I don't give a shit about drawing a card. Next card ignores enemy armor, sure. Alright. Another poison debuff. Ticking for five each. I have a card that removes debuffs. I don't know where the hell it is though. Next card is blue, gain 20 armor. Don't seem to have a lot of damage available to us right now. Two of the same shitty card there. Need to draw cards. Ok, 
Okay, if the next card is blue, draw a card. Turned. This will trigger our thing so we can draw more cards and do more damage. Deck builder that just released in early access today. Always uh, suggest these things on Discord, Peps, because uh, we have a whole system in place for kind of working through suggestions. I need to kill that. Gain 10 armor for this turn is not particularly exciting, but I want to trigger this effect because I can't imagine doing anything without that right now. So now we trigger the effect. Gain 3, draw 2 cards. War right now. We're gonna kill this. Evade. Don't like this chance based evasion. Nine to fifteen damage applies bleed. The next card is red, generate three. I'd like to get armor out of this, so probably we kill him. 12 to 20. The next card is blue, gain 20 armor. So we hit him with that. And then we hit him with this. Okay. So we get 20 armor out of that. We're still double dotted. My health is at 45. We're going to take 20 from that, plus whatever his... 10 from this, plus whatever his attack is. Maybe we need to eat a little bread. Okay. Alright, can I get rid of these fucking dodge check? Like, how big is my deck here? Remove all negative status effects. That's the one I was looking for. Next card is blue. Gain 20 armor. Great. I like to stun him, too. I have no way to actually use this bonus, but I want to get rid of taking 10 damage here. He's attacking me once. He hits me for 12. I don't want to lower my, I guess lowering my non-red ones to zero is fine here, actually. All right, fine. Somehow managed to not leave enough energy to do anything else. Feels bad. I could do this. Could we kill him with this? He's at 50 armor. 56 to 94. So what would this do to him? 15% of 56 is what? 10% of that's 5.6, so it's like eight damage basically. So we're hitting him for a lot of the time we kill him. Almost all the time we kill him, fine. All right, we're victorious. Got another human bone, some mead, a weird candle, and some runny water. I'm curing poisons with that. Forgot I had that. I got a level up. All right. Any word on when the next DLC? Why would I have word of that? No, just follow their dev stuff like everybody else. All right. From my perspective, I don't know. I might come back to this. This was okay. I'm not loving that card combat. It's palatable. I like the basic premise so far. Um, it's kind of interesting wandering around locations in the weird with limited resources to do it. Could be okay. Take another reposition. Eh. All right, I don't know, I don't know is the answer to that. I didn't hate this, but I didn't love it. Was my kind of initial intro to it. Can maybe retouch on this later. See what changes. Maybe we just need to put more time into it. it seemed okay. I, I don't know what to do with that, though. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Better than dumb harpies. Yeah, Gamar, that's the point. 
well, one of the goals, anyways. All right, uh, let's back out of here for now. Let's save this, um, and then quit. What if I want to load? Can I can load this? It doesn't tell me when I save. I just hit save. Presumably I've saved it then. All right. And just out of curiosity, let's fire the game up again and take a look what happens from the... Am I able to load that now? Continue just loads into that, I guess. Yeah, I think we've seen this model before, right? This was the same model of um, Thronebreaker, right? Which is locations on a map um, with card combat once you get to those locations. All right. At least we know a little bit more what the game is and what it's going to be like. Let's check the next title on the list today. We're going to check out uh, Dreadlands next. All right. And two seconds here as we set that up. Um, all right, I need a quick break as we're doing this anyways, because I need to fire up something else real quick as well. Uh, let me do that in just a second. And I should grab water probably. All right, Dreadlands next. Let me update the title. And get that going. Dreadlands. Okay. And okay, that's fired up. Let me just change the screen over. Sorry for that taking just a second longer, but here we go for Dreadlands. Okay, did I get the thing updated? I think I did. Press space to start. No, not there. Here. Early access of Dreadlands. Many features we added during the early access. PvP, co-op, endless dungeons, base management, another faction. Okay. Alright. No, I don't want to go there. I want to delete the gang. Discord patch notes quit. I want to get the intro cutscene. Maybe I can't do that. I think there was an intro cutscene. All right, what do you guys want? Nature worshiping tribekin using their enigmatic. Enigmatic. How do I say that? Enigmatic. God, it's a word you read all the time, but you never say out loud. No one has ever said this word out loud. Enigmatic powers to command ferocious beasts and deploy mystical totems on the battlefield. Mastery of long range sniping. So there's snipers and summoners. You just said it out loud. You're the first person, Zanabu. Congratulations. Extremely territorial and aggressive. Do not mistake them for some harmless tree huggers or hot tempered junk tinkerers renowned for an ability to pilot and blah, blah, blah. All right. Sounds like I want to be these people. Done. Worship the All Mother. Council of Archdruids. They have, they're closely linked to their own unique natural drug that they use incessantly for guidance, pleasure, and stimulant before battle. Okay. We get a gang symbol. Can be <laughs> a boar with an earring, a snake with two eyeballs, a, 
An owl, possibly? Also with an earring? A bear with the nose ring. An animal I'm not familiar with. A dead cow. Not quite sure what that's supposed to be either. All right. I think it's definitely a bear with the nose ring. Or dead cow, but I think bear with the nose ring. Done. Okay. All right. All right, here's our cutscene. Good, good, good. Glow. Everything's about glow around these parts. No one's sure about the hows and the whys, but the stuff only blooms here in the Dreadlands. Nowhere else. It's quite something, that glow. The stuff won't just fuel your long hauler forever. It'll also do hundreds of other crazy things. Crazy good things. Some say it's even shaped the lay of the land, and I won't hold it against them. The Dreadlands don't look like anything else. A goddamn mess, that's what it is. And it ain't just the land. The endless fighting among the gangs, dying in droves for a chunk of glow is a bit of a mess too. And unlike some of the land, not a pretty one. Now, there's a particular gang I want to tell you about. From humble beginnings, they struggled, suffered, and fought their way up to leave a lasting mark on the Dreadlands. But first, they had to find themselves a new home. See, the Dreadlands is no place for wandering vagabonds lacking decent shelter. It'll catch you in the open and chew you up in one fell swoop. Sometimes, the land itself seems to take issue with your well-being and won't rest until you choke from poison air, drown in quicksilt, or beast life feasts on your bones. But as always, the most dangerous predator is human. The gangs of the Dreadlands. And it looks like our new friends are just about to stumble into one of them. Step closer. There had been no time to ponder how, why, or even when. No time to re rest or regroup. Only the way forward was clear, all or nothing. Do or die. And absolutely no turning back. Defeat the enemy gang. Mm -hmm. What's, all right, Blair, what's this then? Uh, more loot keeps wandering in like lambs to the slaughter. Great. Hey, you don't be shy. Come a step closer. Mm-hmm. I'll step closer, all right, boot in your face, kick your corpse kind of close. What the fuck is that? Is that a bear with a bazooka? Is that a rifle? Sounds like you deserve it. Can I rotate camera? I can. I don't know what I'm, I'm mounting here. This is... Use space between to switch between my fighters, sure. What is this though? Explosive barrel. I have a bear called Crusher. Range zero melee. And then I've got this guy. Range three melee four. Aim gives a 20% chance to hit the next shot. Overwatch. Switch weapon. Reload. Hunting rifle. There it is. Damage three, crit damage two. Growler claw. Where's our first enemy? There's three of them. Do they have any explosive barrels? No. So there's cover, it's interesting. Use tab to switch focus to the enemy. Okay. Have to refocus on our guy. Let's move up and shoot them. 
Seems like a reasonable thing to do. Is that my second action, you think? Or you think that was... Because I didn't have the option to move that much further earlier. Aim overwatch. Where's just shoot? Aim overwatch reload. Where's shoot, though? Do I have to aim before I can shoot? 60% there. Hit damage 3. Do I know what they're doing? I can select them. That guy's got an axe and two pistols. Pistol. One pistol and whatever the hell that is. His middle finger, perhaps? I think Overwatch does. Defensive position will fire at the first enemy that enters the Overwatch cone. Select the cone direction by right clicking on empty space. Overwatch cone uses the weapon short range distance. What is my short range distance? To hit short, to hit long. Doesn't give me a dis a range. Was there a negative bonus for cover or is this just accuracy? All right, we missed our first 60%. Welcome. Okay, now it's our other dude, right? Orange looks like a move. Looks like a sprint. Missed us. Once engaged in melee, a fighter is melee locked. If a fighter chooses to move out of melee range, they'll get a free attack. Sure. When melee locked, the fighter can neither use nor be targeted by ranged weapons. Interesting. Why have they done no damage to hitting us? They've hit us twice, right? Low cover, high cover. Low cover provides moderate defense and range attacks. Full cover provides excellent defense and range attacks. Sure. Wish it told me percentages. Stay in cover whenever possible. Come harder to hit. And avoid getting flanked. Hit by a ranged attack from the side. Okay. Pretty standard XCOM kind of things then. So I could go to there and shoot that guy maybe. Only a 60% to hit again. I was expecting that to get better. And I don't know what that other thing... Oh, it's my action points right there. Alright. Okay. It's 0.4 squared now, right? Great, great. Alright, next guy. How about we... Mo we only do 2 damage in melee. Base hit chance 50%, superior melee skill 50%. Do we have any abilities here? We don't. Okay. When a fighter's HP reaches zero, it is down. They can't perform normal actions. Down fighters can be revived using bandage or certain gan tactics. A down fighter will go out of action and move from battle after three turns. So why do we hit him for three? If we only were supposed to do two. Crit? Okay. Follow up or stay? What does that mean? Alright, our bear is currently caught fire after killing that. So we gotta be wary. We gotta find a fire extinguisher is probably how this mission ends. us with an axe. Not great. Missed us with an axe. Okay. Make a ranged attack. Left click on the target while in range. Mm -hmm. Switch with X. Charge an enemy with a melee weapon. Left click on the target when in range. Okay. Alright, let's try the bear first. How much does our melee weapon do? Growler Claw is three. 
can hit this guy at a 90% chance to hit. That seems like a reasonable number to roll on. Okay. And then we can hit this guy at a 90% as well. This now the second melee attack only does two damage? Or is this our other unit? No, this is definitely this unit. Oh, he has one armor, okay. And now we're also on fire. What do you think the fire? I mean, it's clearly some sort of um, clearly some sort of buff from like past actions, but I can't see where it's represented. All right, let's take the other guy. So it said we can get in range to attack, right? Let's go. Battle one, the prisoner calls for attention. We'd wise to hear him out. After all, the enemy of your enemy could be your friend. First, very, very first impressions, it looks like a mobile game to me. Or like, uh, it looks kind of cartoony and kind of silly, kind of. But the combat, all the combat systems seem fine so far. Like, we have cover, we have movement, we have action points, we have turn-based strategy. We have different weapons, melee and ranged. Seems okay. Maybe someone else from my gang can come talk. You don't want to talk to my giant bear? We'll get shit on. The bear does all the talking. Bear has diplomacy skills. Yeah. Recruited another member, possibly? Assault the hideout. Oh, I thought I just did that. Mission root down. Without a proper hideout, the dreadlands will consume you one way or another. Sooner or later, rooting down is a decent hideout. Rooting down in a decent hideout is crucial to the long-term survival of all who consider giving life in the Dreadlands a shot. This is it. Go. Cards. All right. Activate a heal totem on the ground. It cleans all jammed allied weapons. Keep or replace tactic cards. Next range attack will jam the weapons of an enemy, making it unable to... That seems good. Click to replace a card. Morale boost immediately remove all pinned from allied fighters. I don't know what any of these things do yet. It's very difficult. Let's say we don't want that. Replaced. Okay. After landing two successful attacks, the fighter becomes inspired. So now we know what the orange bar is. The health bar will burn, and the next sex successful attack is a critical hit. Cool. Two successful attacks. All right, we got dudes over here. Three, four, how many enemies? One, two, three, four, just those four. All right, let's try using ranged here. Alright. So it doesn't preview that by the way. Tapping that just goes straight to uh to that. Yes. Alright, we're slow as fucking balls on this unit. Um Didn't even look what they had either. The gun. Thirty percent shoot through cover. We had a sixty percent last time, so maybe hard cover is thirty percent value. It does actually say full cover thirty percent value there too. Okay.
Can we move our bear closer? We can. Bear has... Bear has a ranged attack? Weird. Or no ranged weapon. Fighter's big and threatening. Figures, if the fighter is the closest target of an enemy, the enemy will get a minus 25% hit chance to hit on any other targets. Uh, if we lose HP, we gain plus two our melee skill and melee damage. Plus one armor bonus. Plus one damage when using melee weapons. Seems like a pretty fucking great unit. Um, I would like to get closer. This is hardcover there. So maybe we move up to there. Um, could move to there too. What does this weapon do? We have a tomahawk. Four movement, three melee, three ranged, and a scrap gun. Uses the same kind of step thing that uh, XCOM does too, right? Leaning. Okay. Sure. We Overwatch now or no? Yeah. Use the right mouse button to rotate the selected fighter. The facing of your fighter is important. So we just got shot through cover. Basically, the enemy just rolled on two super low percentages and hit us. When an enemy, when a fighter is hit by a ranged attack, it becomes pinned, and then we'll start the next turn with only one action point. That's annoying. Did he just, did he just hit us twice through cover? Looks like a yes. Okay. Meet the revived one allied fighter from downed. You. Okay. I think we need to insert a bear in them. All right. I don't know why I didn't get any fucking shots. Oh, because I'm not in range apparently. probably cover relative to me. Actually, all of those are probably cover relative to me. Alright. Let's go there. Take a shot. 30% only. Pretty sure my opponent's just rolled on 30% and had no problem. I guess we could aim and see if we can shoot through that. So far, the enemy has taken low percentage shots and hit us twice and not advanced into any overwatch, which feels kind of not great. And get closer with the bear. Bird shot next turn. And what are you doing? Do you have like a hunker or cover or anything? We have an overwatch. Aim bandage bandages. Revive down fighter, stop bleeding, heals fighter for one HP. We only have one action, we've got a tomahawk and a scrap gun. I think this guy is probably boned. Can break LOS though with this, interestingly. I wonder if they can still shoot me or not. Didn't draw the, the sight lines, I guess we'll find out. They'll probably shoot at us if they can. Forty-five damage and a bleed. Forty-five percent and a bleed around there. jammed 10% willing to roll on it though okay looking pretty wrecked at the moment
Alright. In my dreams, we occasionally hit them. Alright, so we're pinned there. They're all up. We haven't hit them yet. Our percentages are still garbage, but there's more of them, so they're rolling on us. This is a flank. Leaves me in no cover. Can't get in range to attack them. We're bleeding. This is one HP for three turns. Weapon has been worse than useless so far. Mostly because there's no fucking uh, cover that protects us at all. Um, I wonder if what happens if we would have just backed up instead. But I'm not even close to being able to kill these. We aimed last turn, right? But I don't see that. It's that did I lose the status effect by moving? Possibly. That's armor. I don't know what this other one is. Leader, maybe? I don't want to roll on a fucking 